All right, everybody, welcome back for another breakdown. Today we are looking at, well, let's watch it together. Here we go. Pizza at your door. I'm happy and clean. And that never happens in real life. Sliced bread is delicious. This guy, you know him. I don't. And we're in a house. Sliced bread is good. This is an old Super Bowl ad. This has what I would call the Hollywood polish, right? This is quite slick. The color has a lot to do with color, but also obviously the lighting, the cinematography, the set design, all of this stuff. They, you know, you got cash to spare. You're having a good time. You're getting the best people on it. And it's all about sliced bread. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. He's having fun and everything's burning. And we're back to the door. Now, I know what you're saying. I know exactly what Patrick's going to talk about. He's going to do this whole door routine where we have to see this guy step back. And he's lit like that with his little edge light and his big front light. And if he was back in the door, it would be all dark. I'm not going to do that because we've already done that one, right? You can look back and you can see. I think we did a whole episode on this interaction, which is one of the toughest interactions in the cinematography, the door chat. And you, I remember you saying to me, oh, Patrick, how often are you going to actually do door chat? Well, it's in pretty much every commercial we look at has some sort of door scene. It's always tricky, right? This guy leaning his head in, door chat. Uh, this not door chat, right? He's just hanging out there. Okay, but what I wanted to start with, door chat? No. I wanted to do this scene here. Okay. Now, this the, the camera work is very good. The color is fantastic. The set design, all of that stuff, which is what you would expect at this level. But let's talk about what makes it so good, right? We got all of our options here. You're going to thicken up the image with glass, right? Oh, we can't see it, but you can see the little edges of it. You put a little bit of diffusion on whatever these windows are because we don't really care what's out there. We don't want that light streaming in here. Why is the pen so small? Let's make the pen slightly bigger so we can actually see what it is that we're doing. There we go. So just put diffusion on there, right? If it's not already diffused, put diffusion on there. Put diffusion on there. This is gray. It's nice, but you can feel where the light is coming from, right? You got this little, that's too big. Come on. This is ridiculous. Don't be ridiculous. You can feel, okay, the lighting that is hitting him it's not inside, it's not outside, right? It's not just ambient. There's no, none of this overhead stuff is actually on. You can see the shadows going this way. There's something big and soft over here and it's on a grid so it doesn't go everywhere and it's hitting him there. And then we've got that little edge light from outside or from in, doesn't really matter, which creates this point of interest right where we want to look. Then as we push in, let's use our little wipe there and now it gets interesting. Okay, so see the levels on the skin? Like this is what you want. This is the balance here. It doesn't feel lit. We obviously see where the light is coming from, but it's not so hot. There's not like a spotlight effect. It's mixed in with the levels going on in the windows. And you can see what's happening here, even in the grade, right? You can see the tint in the white. Uh, but just from a shot composition point of view, we've got angle there, right? Going this way, going this way. Then we've got all these things in the foreground to just thicken it up to add a little bit of production design to this thing. Chairs, all these desks running this way. It's not flat at all. Basically anti-flat is what we call ourselves. And we step into it and now the light is coming from this way. Look at how dark it is out there, right? This is where if you have a big location, you're like, how am I gonna light this whole location? This commercial is a great example of, you just don't have to light the whole location, right? Light the area that you can, that budget allows and that time allows. And then if you can't get to the rest of the stuff, you don't get there. All right, this is what happens. I'm sure this person, whoever shot this, had their choice of what to do, but it's not that bad. If it doesn't feel like this does feel quite lit, right? Which it is. You got your eye lights in there. You got your light just wrapping around to the other side, your little leak of a backlight here. Uh, he's looking, which way is he looking? Is he eyeballs this side of the camera? Or eyeballs this side of the camera? And why would he be looking that way? Because that's where the light is coming from. Because this is a good looking image. Right, nice shallow depth of field in between the little things of glass. And we're laughing at this point. This is bread and butter stuff here. Same thing here. Ta-da. Now, if you look at the shadow difference as we move in, everything is softened off. It's also got a little different color to it. Feels a little bit warmer, but basically, same idea. If you can do this shot, you know how to do this shot. When you're like, oh, it can't, this one can't be so dark and moody. Well, you know what that means? Just bring this light around more so you can get more in here. Don't, don't, don't do this. Don't just push light that way, right? Bring it around, wrap it around. You see your little eye lights there. Don't get it in the glasses. Everybody do not get it in the glasses. And then we just run this edge down. See how this edge light here, see how it stops here on the face? It doesn't hit the nose. Do not hit the nose with the backlight. And then we've got little points of interest back here. You know, the little 
sections just to keep things thickening up. And then our little tiny table down there just sets the scene and allows it to feel three dimensional. We cut in all of this stuff is pretty easy, right? Exact same lighting setup. I only point the same stuff out over and over again, because I get constant feedback from people of this might work for this scene or my particular thing, but my story is like this. And so that means I have to change everything about cinematography. It can't be the same. You can't just do the framework all the time. It just doesn't look right. Okay. I mean, literally, it's in every one of these shots. Old mate, key light, shadow, little edge, right? Key light, shadow, little edge, key light, shadow. Whoop, and um, and you can even see in here, it's a great example. So say you're only gonna do a single, right? Of these, in this space, you're only gonna do a single. You want a little bit more moody? Push the light that way. So you only get half of the face lit. You want it a little bit more Hollywood slick? Pull the light closer to the camera. So that way you get to the other cheek, okay? Same exact light, two different positions. You don't even have to go out and do the test yourself. You can just look. Oh, look, which one do you like better? Well, for this story, sort of let's make them look nice rather than making it look like a she-wolf, right? You don't want to do that. And same with this. She where the light is versus the wraparound non-reflective glasses. Almost got out of the frame. Now, softness. Let's talk about just how big this thing is and how this light is completely separate from the light in the background. So that is what you have to start with. Let's imagine this is not a set. You'd have to be balancing to this. If you can put ND on the window, go for it. But th if this is actual day, this is the entire thing that you're balancing your whole entire shot to because you don't want it to blow out and clip and look like, uh, you know, horrendous. So you can put a net on top of there, you can put ND right on top of the window, and then you're balancing, say you can't dim this. Well, now you gotta balance everything to that, right? To the levels that you want just below the light. Take what you can't control, and that's what you balance to. You get something enormous over here, big. If you think, oh, we can do this with a four by frame. Whoa, look at that, I said big, it went big. Uh, you know, you, you think, yeah, you can do it with a four by frame. It's not gonna look as nice, go bigger. Go bigger with a grid, keep it off of this back wall, which means if you gotta keep it off the back wall, you have to come at a pretty steep angle, which means you need something big enough to wrap around. Because if you do this with a four by frame and you start wanting to wrap it around, you're gonna start seeing it over here, which is what you don't want. Keep going, where is it? Paper's thrown. I mean, same stuff here, right? Why, does it, why is the lighting so harsh? Because the shot is so wide, we can't get in there and soften it up and make it feel near as manicured as the rest of this job. This one's good. Little edge, and you're like, oh, a little edge, they probably plan that. No, you can't come around anymore because you see yourself in the mirror, right? Then up here, we've got our little push light, which gives us our key. We're happy because it's above the glasses, so we're not gonna get any reflections. We run that line down there, dark shoulder. I mean, this is a layered image. Lots and lots of layers here. Background, interest, 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 cutting through there. Lots of neg down there, and we're laughing around to the boxing. See how it's always moving in a little bit too? Just like creating that tension. Moving in, moving in, moving in. <gasps> more moving in, more moving in. Cut down the line, karate. And now, <laughs> uh, this is the one where, <laughs> look at that, they just give up at the back. It's too big, the location is too big. And we don't care about what is back there. So just make it dark. These people are standing, it's like this is a, some sort of disaster zone where the emergency lights go on and it's only this one light and the rest of the office is dark right? Or it's kindergarten and they're all napping back there, right? It's nap time. You got your little point lights, which is good to add some interest, but you don't want this lit up white, right? It's too many fixtures, too much time to light the whole thing. So you just put your 112 by 12 over there and shine it this way. And again, look at the, I mean, beautiful framing, right? It's like, again, client and agency. If you frame this shot up and then all of a sudden art department just says, you know, do you need anything in the foreground? You're like, yeah, a little table would be cool. And then you're like, what if we put the orange boxes on the table? <laughs> and then you do it and you just hear <laughs> claps from the client and agency tent. Just like, yes, yes, frothing. Uh, again, light upstage, so you don't get light on this guy, you get it on the back of him. We're shooting this way, we don't really care about these people, they are extras. But we still have this tunnel of folks leading to our beautiful key light coming this way. Not near anywhere balanced to the background, but nobody cares. Again, same thing, light from this side. This is what we're going for. This is the side, like here in this situation, you just have to pick a side, like pick a side, who are we gonna like? And you talk to the first AD like, okay, the extras, do we like these two or do we like those two? If you like those two, swap sides because this is the side that is going to look nice. 
And then please, let's not get a giant in the background. If we're gonna do this whole sit-stand combo, let's pick the smallest person. Because even here, in 16.9, like you're just getting this lady's head in. If she is in an ogre, you know, you're gonna get just her shoulders in the shot. Or it's gonna be really strange composition. So this little extra shuffle, we call it, uh, just make sure that you have the right people in the right spots. And we continue. Also, I like this too. Just a little hint. Now, why would that little hint be here? And how many pizzas did these folks order? They're just mowing down these little Caesars. And Chase, no more pizza, pizza bad, laughing, everything. Even the news guy gets the framework treatment. <laughs> and let's keep going, 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 going. There was one more in here that I wanted to look at. Oh, car. Again, if you got something boring, like, okay, this is an easy car shot. Just, like, do something to make it interesting. Just make it hot out there, make it bright. But do it from the right position, right? We're not going to put it over here and smash them in the face with it. At least make it, make it edgy so you get this little highlights down everything. Right? And then you just push light right at him. But this light that you're going to push right at him out here, you want to get it between, so he's here. Let's do a topographical math here. right? So he's here in the car. The camera is over here. Uh, you want this light that is hitting him here, you want it coming this direction. So park it over here. Don't park it straight at him and shoot this way. Because then you're going to get light all down the side of his face. You want to create a little dimension a third dimension. Time? No. Depth. Uh, that's the fourth. So create that shadow just so it makes it interesting. And here, if you're like, oh, it's boring. I got nothing to do. You don't know where you are because you're on set like this and you're just like, this is not, this is not Romania. And then you just throw something in just to amuse yourself. This little board shot, again, look at how far down these guys are compared to him. Right? And now this is an easy grade fix to take these people down, but it just shows you that if you want to show people where to look, you have to use the lighting to shape where to look. We don't want to look at these people. We got one line we're delivering here. We're using the little techno over push over the table and we're laughing. And then this one, okay. This is just a great example. If you look past the ostrich, like all of these things that are happening back here are leading straight to where we want to look. Right, This line going this way, leading to where we want to look. This line coming this way, leading towards him. And all of this beautiful light. See how we can't see the windows that we are lighting from? You know, this could be the office interior, but we're just making it look like there's windows out here because we don't see that way. We're seeing along this way. And that allows us to light with big units from over there. You can soften it off. You can add your neg over here. And do we add a little? We do have like a little toppy light up here, which is giving you this little edge here. And just again, something where it's not montage -y. This is There's a story ad, but it's lots of quick little cuts. And we're just trying to keep things interesting, right? Use those little tricks to try and make something of it. And we're going to do more of these where it's less, uh, you know, less the 1% jobs and more the 99% of what you'll be doing every day if you make it as a cinematographer. Okay, that is going to do it for this breakdown. Uh, hopefully you got something out of it if you've got uh, ideas or scenes, specific setups that you want to see broken down, leave them in the comments below. And if you want more of this stuff, you want to see feature films broken down or music videos, uh, head over to the Patreon site, which you'll find the link below. And you can do, uh, well, you can find lots and lots of uh, extensive breakdowns. Uh, they get pretty long in there and detailed, and that's where we can do all the films. So uh, do that if you wish. Okay, goodbye.